So one of the things that's always bugged me about the master systems and most retro consoles is powering the devices. There's always a certain AC adapter, sometimes a positive's on the outside, some it's on the inside, sometimes it's a custom connector. It's always a pain to power the old consoles. So what I did last month was to create the clean power for the Dreamcast. This allows you to use a USB-C power brick to power the entire Dreamcast. I've continued that now, and we have the master system here, so you can guess now that the next one is the master system clean power. So we're going to do the same thing for the master system one. We're going to change the old AC port into a USB-C port. So let's get to it and see how you do this. First things first is to remove the screws around the base, which there are six screws on the base. And then you just lift the lid off carefully. Once inside, there's a whole bunch more screws all around the console. Simply remove all of those. And then you can remove the motherboard. Let's set this aside. So let's just see what comes in this kit. So we have firstly the USB-C bracket the actual clean power board, some screws to screw together, two wires for the power and one for bridging. So let's start by just putting the USB-C together. So we've got the support here. We just press through like that. You'll see it sticks out. It's meant to stick out further like this because that allows it to poke through the shell to allow USBs to physically fit, so that's normal. Just take your screws, place them in the four holes and then just secure the clean power board to the actual USB bracket. You'll notice sometimes the hole on the bracket hasn't quite gone through. So to clear that hole firstly, just put your screwdriver upside down and just push through like that. It's nice and easy to break off if you have that bit of plastic that's there on the bracket. With that in place, let's just move these to one side a minute and let's bring in the actual motherboard for the master system. We want to remove this old heat sink because it's not needed anymore. So remove the two screws from underneath holding it down. And then if we flip over there'll be another screw holding the actual heat sink to the regulator. We want to remove that as well. You can leave this in place if you want but just leave it off otherwise. And now what we want to do is bridge the input and output of this together instead of having to remove this regulator so it's easier to reverse in the future. So we'll see on the back here. So you'll see where this goes through the board. On the back right here, we want to bridge the input and output. So you can bridge over here or you can bridge over these two pins. It doesn't really matter which you do, so long as you do one of them. And for that, we use the included little bit of orange wire so I'm just going to bridge these two, this one and this one. And then just make sure once you've done this, you never apply 9 volts to the system. You always use the USB-C or you remove this wire because this will bypass the regulator altogether. And we're simply sending 5 volts straight into the system. There's no need to have a 9 volt regulator. With that on, the next thing to do is to remove the old DC jack. So to remove that, we will flood this with solder and then remove it. You can use hot air, but I'll try and remove this without hot air because quite a few of you don't have hot air stations. So I'll show you the way to do it with just solder. So just flood the entire area with plenty of solder. And the idea for this will be to try and bridge all three together like this. So now we can just leave the heat on. And we have one big pile of solder warming all three pads. And then it's off. And you can see this come apart in bits. Which doesn't matter because we're not going to be reusing this. But with hot air, you'll tend to find you'll get that off in one go. And with that DC jack off now, the new clean power will just sit over this hole and lock in through this screw thread here when it's in the case. So the only thing left to do is solder in the ground and VCC wires to the ground and VCC pads here. So for that, we'll just take the red and black wires we have in the kit and solder them in place. And then we'll just poke the 
red wire through for VCC and the black wire through for ground and now this is ready to go we just need to solder this onto the board so I tend to go down here you can go above the diodes but there's really no need because this is always the correct polarity and you're just going to get volts drop and energy wasted going through these so with that in mind we will just tack on the bottom side and just make sure you've got this the right way so make sure your ground on your revision if it's any different is definitely ground you can see the ground pad takes significantly longer to warm up and flow because it's a large area but there we go we eventually get the ground to flow as well and the way you obviously check ground is get your multimeter on continuity go to this cage here and test which one is ground if you're unsure you can clearly see this one is ground you can literally see it go into it but always measure to be sure because you don't want to solder this on backwards attack the red wire on and the ground wire on and just remember that ground wire takes a lot longer to warm up because it's a huge ground plane so make sure you get a good connection and there we have it it's now installed and ready to go and now the final step is to put this back in the case so take the base and place the board back on the stumps and all we need to do to secure the clean power in place is use the original screw that went through that hole and send the screw back down that will now lock in place solid place the lid back over make sure it clicks down and now you'll see the nicely centered USB-C plug so let's give that a quick test now let's grab the USB-C wire plug it in the console and turn on and there you can see we have the console booting now so it really is that simple to install and mod your master system now to be USB-C powered instead of a random DC jack you have a nice simple install simply remove the DC jack screw this in place and bridge the regulator underneath and it's fully reversible if you maintain your original DC jack and just remove this jumper wire so hopefully you guys like this any other consoles you want USB-C modding let me know I've done so far the Dreamcast the Sega Saturn the Master System 1 and 2 and the Mega Drive 1 and 2 although a few of those aren't out yet they're in production those are already made any other consoles let me know and I'd love to see your thoughts also if anybody wants these for free and is willing to do review videos unbiased then definitely reach out on our Discord. I like to send these out to anybody who's willing to review them and be honest about them and give good feedback on the Discord server as well as the video. So that's it for this one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next.